Boo. Hey guys. I'm just waiting for everybody to pop on here for a minute. I don't know if you heard the clock tower when we first started. Who is ready to paint with me? So if you haven't been following along, I have been posting these live videos in uh, the events on my page. I thought I'd do something a little different and post my live video from my personal page today. If you guys know somebody that wants to paint or is internet, uh, you know, um, has trouble struggling finding the links and uh, finding the events, be sure to go down below and share this link with your friends. Uh, and if you can't, <laughs> hi Todd, I see you there. Um, if you don't have time to paint today or you don't have all the supplies that you need, you can watch this later, just so you know. Yay, I'm ready too. So I'm really excited because today's painting is very uh, simple. It's super relaxing. That's why it's called Space Out because I want you guys to just relax and enjoy what we're doing. Hopefully you learn how to do something with me and you can play with basic colors and basic tools. And so, um, yeah, let's just wait, uh, wait a minute and wait for everybody to pop on. Thanks for hanging out with me. Say hi, and if you uh, are watching this later, make sure to say hello and drop a hashtag replay so I can see who popped on later and, and give you a shout out. So if you guys have any trouble with any of the things that I'm gonna be showing you today, make sure to ask questions. You can always DM me later. Um, you know, we've got a lot of spare time, so I've got, you know, I've got a little extra for you. If you need questions answered, just be sure to send me a message. So uh, I'm going to go over supplies while we're waiting for everybody to find the event. And um, I just want to make sure that we're all ready to go. So for today's painting, we just need, I'm just going to show you the, the painting one more time. So we're painting a space nebula. And the fun part about this is the clouds can go anywhere you want. I'm going to show you how to highlight. We're going to do some splatter painting um, and blending with just a few simple tools but you guys can add in other colors so if you have like you know hot pink or orange or yellow or green and you want to you know mix in some of those colors then you can definitely do that your canvas does not have to be upright it can be um, you know a different size if you only have paper or cardboard um, you know a rock your hand or whatever um, your your wall just paint on that instead okay so for today's today's event you should only need black white red yellow um, and blue I mean if you have extra colors like you know hot pink or light blue or purple or anything like that pre-mixed then you can certainly add them in there but you only need the very basic very basic colors to do this and then what I suggested for you guys in the comments of the discussion I don't know if you guys noticed this but um, you can use like an old paintbrush so if you have like a really rough messed up paintbrush that you know you wouldn't paint trim with but maybe you were saving to stain wood or something you could definitely use uh, a paintbrush like that the bristles don't have to be smooth um, I'm going to use this for creating clouds later and then you know you can use a big brush like this for blending our background if you need and then if you have a small detail brush or something uh, for creating stars later you can definitely do that or if you want to add in a ship or uh, planets or whatever you want you can do that um, I also stole one of my daughter's old toothbrushes this could come in handy you don't need to have this but it could come in handy for a little less mess um, if you have one water bowl set up on your station, I will suggest to you to now go fill up a second water bowl. You'll probably want to have a second water bowl handy because we are going to be using a lot of black and you probably don't want that to contaminate your brush or the paint um, that we're going to be using. Okay, so paint brush, at least one, one big one, um, two water bowls paper towels or a paint rag, and then your palette of black, white, blue, red, and then if you have extra colors, great. But the main colors are black, white, blue, and red, okay? So I'm gonna flip this around one more time. Okay, and if you're new to joining us today, make sure to let me know where you're painting from. Uh, if you've got some kiddos, I like to know what the ages are. If I'm going too fast, please, please, let me know if I'm going too fast for you guys. Um, 
I want this to be easygoing, I want it to be relaxing, I want it to be fun, and I want to make sure that I'm going at everybody's pace. So here's the main painting, but we're going to start off with just a blank canvas. So I have a little smaller one here just to show you guys. It doesn't matter what size painting you have. Oh, I also mentioned if you happen to have a hair dryer handy, that could be helpful to you, but not totally necessary. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do before we get everything started is you're going to take your paintbrush and you're going to paint your entire canvas black. Okay, so nowadays um, you can buy fancy schmancy canvases that are already pre-primed black um, at art stores. But I'm going to show you how to kick it old school with me here. And we're just going to do a nice thin coat of black over our whole canvas, okay? Oh, Jessica, you're going to do good. Just move your arms really fast. So the key here, guys, is we want to create a really good barrier or a skin on the surface of our canvas to make sure all the other paint lays on top and doesn't um, absorb into the surface. But I don't want it to be so wet that we can't blend other colors on top. So what I suggest that you do when you're painting your canvas black is to get a good amount of paint on your brush and to spread it and blend it across the surface until it won't blend anymore. So that means you know, continue to run your brush over it. And this will do two things. It'll continue to push the paint into the crevices of the canvas, and it will also help it to dry more quickly, okay? So also, even though we're painting clouds and things over the top of this, I will suggest that you at least make all your brush strokes going the same direction, okay? Just to give it a nice um, even tone in the background. So if you're just hopping on, we haven't done anything super fancy yet. All we're doing is taking black paint and painting our whole canvas. And I'm just going to talk at you guys for a minute and hopefully um, be able to help you out with some stuff. So one of the reasons why I chose today's painting is there's a special phenomenon happening right now. I don't know if you guys know this. But today, tomorrow, and I think also the next day, you should be able to look at the moon and Jupiter and Saturn and Mars are all going to be lining up so that you can see them next to the moon. They're all going to be in a row with each other. So, you know, with all this extra downtime that we have, we can definitely take a moment to start staring up at the sky, taking on new hobbies like painting or, you know, astronomy. <laughs> so if you have a moment to check out the moon, I heard the best times to look at it are in the early morning when it's still up. But I mean, you can also try and look at it at night and see, see if you can see that. Um, I don't think that you need a, a telescope, but I mean, I'm sure it would be much cooler with a telescope to see that. So yeah, Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, and the moon should all be in a line and all happy. And so I'm just gonna show you guys how to make the, the nebula clouds and then um, stars. But if you guys wanna add in little extra details like planets or, um, you know, I've had people do like spaceships and stuff, that, that's definitely a fun, a fun little addition to add to your painting. And the cool thing about painting nebulas is in space, there is really no up or down. So you can flip your painting around. You might start painting it in this direction and then decide you don't like it this direction. And then you, um, you know, or you can just change it up. If you wanna have a fresh new look, you can just continue to rotate your painting every week and it's like you have a new painting. Okay, so like I said before, I'm using a canvas today, but you can use any surface you want. So if you get really into painting space nebulas, you could do your whole ceiling in your bedroom. You can invest in some glow-in-the-dark paint, and then you can stare up at your ceiling every night and make sure, um, you know, you have something relaxing to look at. Okay, so again, I want a nice thin coat of black paint. If it's super, super shiny or you can scoop the paint off with your finger, that's obviously too much paint. And what I would suggest is just wiping off your brush 
and running a dry brush over the surface, okay? So again, if you know this isn't your jam and this is too much arm work, uh, like my friend Jessica, who's got a tiny brush, no offense, Jessica, <laughs> uh, you can certainly go and buy um, canvases that are already black. Uh, we're going to do kind of a re reverse painting. So usually I start with white canvases, and this is going to be a little bit different because we're going to be um, building backwards. We start with our shadow first because shadows are behind and underneath. So that's why we do the black. And then we're going to be painting highlighting colors on top of the black once the black is a little bit more dry, okay? So something I tell my painters all the time is when you're trying to create contrast in your piece, uh, especially extreme contrast of depth, you really need to pay attention uh, to what colors are touching each other. So if I have a dark background and then I paint another dark color on top of it, it's not really gonna pop. So if I want that to pop and have a strong contrast, I need to kind of pay attention to, if I have a dark background, that means the next layer of color that I would put on the surface would be light. And then the next layer of color I would put on top of that would be dark and so forth. Oh, Carrie, you're so sweet. Thank you so much. That is really nice. So again, guys, if you can't paint right now, but you are popping on and just seeing this video, uh, and you're wondering what the heck is going on, I've been doing uh, live painting classes for free uh, ever since the, the lockdown started and we've all been staying at home so that we have something to do that's positive, that where we can all meet and kind of be, you know, a little communal still and creative and kind of distract our mind from maybe the daily grind or the monotony of everything that's going on. And if you can't, you know, paint during the live video, I'm leaving up all the videos during this time so that you can go back and watch the replay. And if you live in Kitsap County, where I do, I know I have some people that are watching from out of state and even out of country, but if you live in Kitsap County, um, I'm putting together paint kits for people. So if you don't have supplies, I've got little bags that have got all the colors you need, uh, canvas, pencil, paint brushes, uh, paper, that kind of stuff, little plate and uh, paper towels to make sure that you're all set up to paint if you want to, okay? So I've got a full coat of black paint on here and I just wanna make sure, see I'm just gonna run my brush over it. I have nothing left on my brush, but I'm just gonna continue to run my brush over the surface just to make sure that's all nice and even and dry. And you can even clean off your brush, make sure that your brush is dry, and then run a dry brush over the surface just to make sure that it's, that it's all set. And if you have a few little speckles and things popping out on the canvas, do not worry about that. Because remember, we're gonna be adding multiple layers on top of this with those nebula clouds. So no big deal but we do want the canvas to be fairly dry. So this is the other thing. I remember I had said in the discussion, if you guys happen to have a hair dryer on hand, uh, that will definitely help you. I'm not gonna torture you with the noise of a hair dryer uh, in the background of this class. But I mean, if you wanna speed up the process of your canvas drying, you can definitely use that to your advantage, okay? So this is why you needed two water bowls. So once your canvas was dry and you got the nice even coat of black paint on there, you're gonna take your brush and you're gonna stab it in the bottom of one of your water bowls and get all of that paint out. And then you're gonna be so happy that you have the second bowl of water <laughs> to, clean, to clean your brush off, okay? So that way I have a nice clean brush afterwards. So if you ever wondered how to clean your brush really thoroughly, just stab the bottom of the water bowl to make sure that it gets all the paint out of the brush all the way to the stem there, okay? So I'm just gonna go back to the original just to show you guys what's happening here again. So see, we painted the background black first. Uh, so that way that when we go to paint all of our nebula clouds, and everything, those will layer on top. 
and then we'll have all these little spaces already done and then if you want to add in more black spaces later then you definitely you definitely can okay so I'm a pretty speedy painter and so I know not everybody is gonna be right at the same pace as me but if you guys give me thumbs ups so I can you know just hit your keyboard and give me a heart or a thumbs up or something just so that I know you're ready to move on to the next step and I can uh, I can talk about what the next step is gonna be so we're gonna do this painting in uh, three stages we're gonna do we created our primed background which is a dark black background you know uh, so you can either do this yourself at with black paint at home or you can buy pre-made black canvases if you have time or the ability to go to the art store and buy it um, you know a black surface and then the second step is we're gonna add in some stars and then the third step is you're gonna learn how to layer the nebula clouds so that they have shadow and light and uh, are blended together and then maybe we can add some more stars at the end to give this you know lots and lots of depth and so again if you know somebody that would be interested in painting this painting with us and have a good time but maybe they were not able to access it at this time be sure to share this with them share the link with them and let us know what's going on the class is free but if you don't have art supplies I do have art supplies available for people in Kitsap County. Um, if you got value from this class, I've also posted a virtual tip jar where you can leave a tip or a contribution to keep stuff going. Okay, so we have our canvas, all black. I'm waiting to see some hearts and some thumbs ups and all that stuff to make sure that you guys are all on the same page as me. But uh, I'm just gonna talk about the next step, okay? So the next step is we are first going to um, create some stars on our background and we want to do that first so that we're able to create some depth and layers in our painting so we can put some stars down and then we'll paint some clouds over the top of some of them so we can figure out spacing and then we can add more stars in and it'll look like our painting is in a few you know a few layers of depth so there's a few ways that you can you can make these stars okay so you can either use the same brush that you've been using just make sure it's clean. Or you can use that toothbrush that I was talking about if you have an old toothbrush lying around. So I'm just gonna show you how to use the toothbrush because this is a nice way to control your paint uh, and make sure that if you use this technique that you, if you have a drink next to you or anything behind your canvas that you make sure it's covered or out of the way because we're about to get a little messy. So see all my colors I have here? Uh, I'm gonna take the toothbrush and I'm gonna tap it into the paint so that I have enough on there that it looks like I'm about to brush my teeth. But I'm not gonna brush my teeth. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take my toothbrush and I'm gonna dip it into water, but I'm gonna tap that toothbrush until no drips of water come off of it. This step is very, very important because if drips come off the toothbrush, that means that they're going to drip onto your canvas, okay? So the next thing that I do is you can either take your pointer finger like this or your thumb and you can point it straight at your canvas and you can very quickly drag your finger through the paintbrush. So if you have a paintbrush, you can do the same thing. I suggest using your thumb, that's easier. You can tap your paintbrush into the paint dip it in a little water, tap it off to the side, and then you're gonna use your thumb to very quickly drag your thumb and point it at the canvas, okay? So you can do this as little or as much as you want, and you wanna make sure that your brush is pointed very straight at the canvas or else you're gonna either shoot your eye out or spray whatever's next to you, and yes, Jessica, I don't want anybody to spray your laptop, so don't do that, okay? So you're gonna spray that all over the canvas and that's gonna be your far away galaxy star. So the further away you are from the canvas, the more spread out the stars are, the closer you are, um, the, the smaller and the closer together those stars are gonna be. And if you do get some drips or some splotches on there that you don't like, 
do not fret my friends because we're gonna add nebula clouds over the top so that's not gonna make a difference okay so I'm just gonna so here's our black canvas with white splatter there's the original painting again just so you guys can see okay so see this this was all our stuff that was in the background and then we can paint the clouds and then if you want you can add you know little spots and stars and things on top of that later okay so phase one paint your canvas black or go buy a black canvas phase two is splatter the heck out of your canvas with white paint and if you had glow in the dark paint you could definitely use glow in the dark paint if you wanted to use other colors as long as they are light colors uh, you can definitely do that so if you wanted to use yellow or light blue um, play I think this is a really fun thing to do a lot of people enjoy doing the splatter painting it could um, <laughs> make your fingers really messy though so I warn you you may if you just got your you know your nails done and you were savoring that during the during the shutdown I apologize for your nails ahead of time okay so here is the first two stages of the painting okay so next we are going to go back to our paintbrush and we want to make sure so my paintbrush is all funky if you don't have a funky and yours is all soft and fluffy that's okay that'll that'll work too um, but you know I like to have the messy one because this is going to create more texture and I want to kind of do a little test with my finger and I want to feel around on the dark patches of the canvas and I want to see if my canvas is mostly dry it should be dry by now but if it's really shiny and really wet then you want to avoid it if there's some splatters on there uh, don't worry about that just worry about if the black paint is dry so once we get that figured out uh, we're gonna move on to the next step so um, all I said at the beginning was the main colors you needed for this painting are black white blue and red if you have all those colors cool if you have extra colors, then um, you can certainly use those. So what I'm gonna do, because I have a few extra colors, is I'm gonna use um, dark blue mixed with a little bit of a, a lighter blue. Okay, so if you had like a teal or something, you could definitely use that. If you only have dark blue, add a little bit of white to it to make it a little bit lighter. Not a lot lighter, just a little bit lighter. Okay, and then you're going to get enough paint on your brush so that it's on the bristles, but not, you know, heaping gobs. So you can wipe your brush off like a peanut butter knife on the side of your plate. Okay, so we're just going to use that as our as our base color blue. Okay, and then you're going to choose a spot on your canvas to create a cloud. And so the fun thing about clouds in space is, you know, there's no up or down in space. So what I'm doing is I'm using a tapping um, brush stroke. This is called stippling. And I'm kind of creating a zigzag, but I'm not making all of my zigzags perfect. Okay? Because it's a cloud and it's just floating around. And because in space there's no up or down, it doesn't have to be, you know, a perfectly even shape. And so obviously the more you tap, um, and the further away you go from where you originally tap, the less paint you're going to have on your brush and the more soft and subdued that will be become. Don't worry about um, if it's really strongly showing up yet because we're going to add more layers to highlight and add dimension and you can definitely add more color into it later. But so it's better to start with less paint and then build on that because it's easier to make a soft, soft blend. Okay. So if you have a smoother brush, so if you have a smoother brush and you don't have a brush that's like this, I'll show you to do the same thing. You just take a little bit of paint and wipe your brush off so you don't have as much. And then see, I can still tap. It just might, the paint might be a little bit um, thicker. So that's why it's important to have less paint on your brush. So instead of just doing polka dots all over my canvas, you'll notice that I started in one area 
And then I gradually moved away from that area so that everything's still connected, but you can still leave little spots of, of, of black popping out, okay? So, and it's okay if some of the paint is lighter and some is darker in some areas. So see how I kind of left a little bit of a hole here? Okay, so the fun thing about space is remember there's no up and down, so you could create a circle, you can create a zigzag. I'm just adding some clouds just at the, at the base here. And then in a few areas, I'll add some around the top too. But see, you don't want to cover up all of your black paint. You just want to make a few to start, and then you can build from there. So this technique is called stippling, okay, where I'm tapping and blending. And so the fun thing about using, like if you had um, blue with a little bit of white, but you didn't completely mix the paint all together, is it's going to create a nice little, you're going to have some shadows and highlights without doing a lot of work. So if you're getting um, a brush stroke where it's too textured, like it looks really um, splotchy on the edges, that means that you're either tapping too lightly or you're using too much paint. The more you tap on a spot, like if, you, if I just tap on it one spot over and over again, it'll just continue to um, soften and blend, okay? So we can add these all over the place if we want. And we're just going to start with that base color of like a lighter blue. And like I said, I'm mixing, you know, this blue with a little bit of this lighter blue. But you could also just use blue with a little bit of white to get that going. And then make sure that every time you do this that you wipe off your brush so that you don't have a giant amount of paint. And you can gradually build those colors up. See, because see how intense that is, even with that little amount of paint on there? So if you if you go to put paint on and you notice that it's way chunky or way too intense, wipe your brush off because you have plenty of paint already on the canvas and on the surface, and you can blend that paint that's already there around without having more on your brush, okay? So do you guys see how um, when I'm creating the clouds, I'm not just doing a perfect straight line or a perfect zigzag. I'm, you know, I'm making the edges lumpy and bumpy. And the other thing that I'm doing is you want to imagine that the cloud is, is gas that's dissipating. So that means that in the middle where it's concentrated, it's going to be, you know, thicker. And then as it starts to fade and dissipate, on the edges, it's going to start to get thinner or skinnier and lighter. And so I always start where I want my cloud in the middle where I have the most paint. And then as I have less paint on my brush, I'm able to tap and move away from that spot to create, you know, the effect of lighter without having to do a lot of extra work by adding different colors on there. Okay. So we're going to keep adding and filling in different areas. Okay, tap, tap, tap. So if there's multiple people in your household and they are painting with you, it should sound like it's raining right now in your living room, even though, or in your kitchen or wherever you're painting, even though <laughs> it's nice and sunny outside. So if, you're, if you have known me for a while and you haven't seen me paint, welcome guys, this is me painting live. On Facebook and if you have painted with me before and done a class share your experience um, I'm still trying to you know keep my business afloat while everything is going on and so I want people to still know that we're doing stuff please share your experience with people and let them know um, you know how the class was for you if you had a good time if you learned anything um, you know share that with your friends we're still able to meet and do fun stuff over the internet, guys, even if we can't see each other in person. So uh, that means like I've done virtual um, drawing and painting lessons with people one-on-one -on -one, uh, through Zoom. That means I can still do virtual parties. Like So if everybody's in their house but they want to get together, uh, we can still, you know, arrange things like that. I'm still taking commissions and 
um, you know, painting murals and windows. And so see how we had our stars all behind. We don't want to cover up all of the stars, but I want to, you know, definitely create a dimension in front of those stars by adding blue. So I'm not covering my whole canvas. I'm still leaving spaces. Um, and then now I'm able to move on to the next color. So if you have a lot of blue left on your brush, you want to clean your brush off and make sure it's really dry. And if you don't have a lot of paint on your brush, but the tips are just blue like mine, then you can just use your next color, uh, which is, you know, a little red and white or pink. And it's going to blend. If it accidentally blends with the blue, that's okay, because that means you'll get, you know, some purples and things like that. So if you have red and you want pink, you would add a little bit of uh, white and red together. If you have pink already, um, then you can use pink or a little bit of pink and white, and you're going to do the same thing uh, with the pink color that you did with the blue, except for um, you can add it just in a few areas, like along the edge of the blue. See here, like that? I can add it in a few spots along the edge, or I can add it on its own, creating its own little cloud space. And if you don't like blue and red and you would rather use like green and yellow or something, uh, and orange, you could definitely do that. Uh, I wouldn't mix in um, like orange if the blue is wet because orange and blue make brown. So if you want the nice bright colors, make sure that you're mixing uh, a little bit of white with it because that'll definitely help. So see here I've got my red paint so I can take a little bit of red and I can just touch white and then I can wipe it off on the side of my plate and that just mixes it for me without you know having to swirl my brush. Okay and then I can add that in a few different spots. Okay and again if you notice that you put paint on and you go whoa that looks like too much then you want to wipe your brush off Okay, and then go in with a dry brush while the paint is still wet. See, tap, tap, tap. Okay, and then you can certainly uh, blend that out. Or if you wait for the paint to dry and you go, oh, I didn't like the pink there. I liked it when it was just blue. Just wait for the paint to dry to the touch. And then you can add blue back over the top of that. Okay, so we're going to add little accents of pink all over the place and so when you add your accents of pink don't do it around a whole entire part of a cloud just choose like one side and then stick with that so maybe if I added pink on this side I wouldn't do any over here I would just add a little bit maybe on the inner side of that okay and remember it's okay and we like it if some areas are brighter and some areas are are darker okay so don't be worried about it all having to be a consistent shape or consistent um, colors we want to have different dimensions because everything's just floating around in the the outer sphere okay <laughs> all right so I want you guys to play with this so if I decided oh that's too too light then I can wipe my brush off. I can even go back into blue and see, look, I can add blue back over the top of that. And I don't know if you guys know this, but if you mix red and blue together or pink and blue, you're going to get a nice purple color. So if you're trying to get purple, um, you can mix that either on your canvas or you can mix it on your plate ahead of time. So you'll notice that the, the way that this is blending softly is because I'm using a very little amount of paint. I don't need lots and lots of paint to make this effective. It actually is more effective to get that misty, gaseous, like soft effect if you're using a light amount of paint and then doing a lot of pushing. So I'm tapping and pushing the brush into the canvas, okay? So I'm just going to go back to the original painting here again because this is, see, it's, see, the beauty of us doing this class, guys, is each painting can be so different. So if you liked the darkness of these colors, you can go in uh, and make these more intense. 
uh, if you like the lighter effect. So see, I could just come in with just the blue by itself and I can go into the areas that I feel like look a little bit darker and I can add more, more blue in in a few areas. Okay. How are we feeling so far? Does anybody have any questions or are we having any struggles or am I going way too fast or are we right all on the same on the same track here? Is everything looking okay? Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better. Is that better? Zoom in a little bit. There we go. Good. Dun, dun, dun. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyagers <laughs> of Rembert Illustrations Enterprise. I have to be careful with that. That's copyright infringement. <laughs> okay, so we can continue to add as much or as little color to this as we want. So if areas are dark and you want to intensify them, you can come just along. So you don't want to cover the whole area. You want to intensify them just close to where the edge of the color is. So see, if I were to make brighter pink, I would add it just along the outer edge, not along the whole, and not everywhere either, just in a few, few spots just to make it pop out a little bit more. See there? And so it's effective for me to actually paint on camera for you guys. So one of my tricks, and I tell this to people when they're painting with me too, is um, if you're wondering if you're, you have enough dimension or highlight or shadow in your painting, look at your painting through your camera lens. Because your job as an artist is to create an illusion using color and line. And so in order to create that dimension or know if you're being effective, you need to look at it through your viewer's perspective. And sometimes it's hard to capture your viewer's perspective from three inches away from your canvas. So the other way to do that is by looking through your camera because also the camera will pick up on, um, you know, different things that you may not see um, and you can see how it reacts in light. So that's my trick. So me painting on camera for you guys is good because then I can recognize, you know, the areas that really need to pop and the really the areas that need to be pulled back a little bit. How's it looking to you guys so far? How are you feeling about your paintings? Here we go. So see, I don't have to add pink or purple or blue everywhere just by sometimes adding a little tiny bit in you know one little area and kind of cutting it through even cutting it through another um, section of color will add like another layer of dimension so that it looks like the clouds are coming out at you so see this is uh, all basically one color so if I took you know a little bit of pink and then I just kind of created a little bit of a wiggly tapping section in there all of a sudden I have you know this little lump on my cloud that's kind of popping out at us right what do we think you need a little more time no problem Janelle I'll, I'll try and slow down this part is really fun this is where you get to add loads and loads of color so um, you know you do the black background we do the white splatter and then um, you know we add layers of color so these tones we want to be kind of so we go from the darkest color which is black and then we add the white stars and then we add kind of a medium tone for the base of our clouds and then the last step is going to be to add a brighter tone to look like some of these clouds are lit up in certain sections and then after we add the lit up sections we can come back in and add even more uh, stars and more depth like planets and things so we really want like edges like this part of the cloud to pop out against that uh, that black sky so 
you want to go in and make your blue even a little bit lighter or you can take like a little tiny bit of white so I'm gonna take my my little detail brush if you don't have a little detail brush you can definitely still use the big dog here I'll use the big one just to show you guys with that first but again you want to take a little bit of paint wipe your brush off so you don't have a lot and then if you only have the big brush you can just use the corner and you can kind of just blend or tap just like along the edge. Of one of the clouds. So see I can just tap and use the corner. Just along one side. Okay, I'm going to use my little brush because that's what I prefer. You can also so just take your brush. I like to dip it in the paint. This is what I do. I dip it in the paint and then kind of roll my roll my brush off to the side so that the brush is loaded, but I don't have a ton of paint on there. And then you can kind of um, tap 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 just mini tap along the edge. And then if it is too bright and you need to create a little bit more separation here you can dip back into your back into your blue and then just tap that like on the on the inner edge to kind of blend and merge those colors a little bit more so you can tap and then you can also use like a a swirling or a rolling motion and then I like to like if you're new to painting if you just take your brush and you kind of hold it lower rather than like way up high and you can also go back so if you need to come back in with the the big brush and kind of blend out some of that stuff you can take your big brush and kind of tap over tap over the middle if you need to okay So I'm just going to add some of this white. And so where I'm adding the lighter color, so you can either use like a lighter blue or a lighter pink, or you can add just full on white by itself. And I'm going along the outer edge of the cloud just to add a little bit extra dimension. So you notice I'm not just drawing a line. I want to kind of follow the shape that I created or if you didn't create much of a shape when you were tapping, this is where you can create more of a shape by extending that, extending that highlight a little bit. So the steps that we went through is we did dark color, which is the black, then we did our mid-tones, right? And now we're adding that brighter highlight. And so again, you don't need a ton of paint for this. Just start with a little bit of paint and then you can gradually build it up. And it's kind of cool to make it brighter in one spot and then as, see how it's starting to get darker down here, you can kind of let it taper off and let it get stay darker. And then instead of, um, like see, maybe light's hitting it this way, but there's a shadow here. So then I would only, you know, maybe create a little bit of a highlight on this part of the cloud and leave that leave that dark if that makes sense it's kind of fun doing the live classes like this too guys because then you can also look at everything much closer and inspect it <laughs> or if you watch the replay you can you can um, stop and rewind or pause and go get yourself a get yourself a drink <laughs> of juice of course so you can also take that down in here so for instance if i wanted to create extra dimension in this cloud instead of leaving this all one solid color i can break this up and i can add a little highlight so I could take white or a lighter pink and I can also create a little bit of a highlight in here. So tap, tap, tap or roll, 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 okay? And you don't want, so you want the outer edge to be nice and bright and then you wanna dissipate 
the inner edge or make it kind of fade. And so what I do is you either wipe off your brush and then while the paint is wet, you can kind of scrub your brush and blend it out, right? Or you can take your big brush and you can kind of tap just on the inner edge though. You wanna leave that outer edge kind of harder and bright and then you want it to kind of fade away into a blend so that we're getting the effect of light medium to dark to, to fading that fading that away on the inner edge. So I'm going to do a bunch of highlights on this so you guys can see it in a couple different lights. So for instance, if I have light on this part, that means that my light is somewhere in the middle and I can add, you know, maybe a little highlight over here on this side too. So if I wanted some of this to pop, I can add a little bit of light. And again, you don't have to outline and highlight the whole thing, or if you wanted to give more of a shape, you can just extend your cloud the way you want it to be. See, we don't have to blend and highlight the whole thing. We can just do tiny little sections, because that is the weird thing about space, is that light is coming from everywhere or it's coming from nowhere <laughs> and so the rules kind of get bent up there in the up there in the sky so you can add um, you know highlights in your clouds in all different areas okay and again so you want that outer edge to be kind of brighter and then you want the inner edge to be more blended okay but right now, our nebula is starting to pop. It's popping. What do you guys think? I hope, I hope, I hope that these classes have been helpful for you guys uh, to either learn something or to at least provide some entertainment during our time where we are kind of stuck. I know that it's been great for me to be able to gather with you guys and um, to provide this as a service and to share what I know how to do and hopefully it helps you to learn some new stuff or to sh spend some time with friends or, or loved ones. There we go. So we're getting we're getting deep into the into the outer sphere so you notice I added some highlights down here and then I can kind of skip up to the top areas up here so again every gaseous cloud does not need to be highlighted but you know definitely a few just to add a little bit more interest so if I wanted you know maybe I would do the inner edge of this one so I'm tapping tap 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 and see I'm not just making sure it's like a perfect little um, oval I want it to be kind of lumpy and I want the outer edge to be brighter and then the inner edge to be blended and so how we make the inner edge blended is by adding more paint because acrylic paint is not gonna blend while the paint is dry it's gonna lay on top okay so if we want to add highlights you have to do it while the paint is still fresh and wet okay and so you can add the highlight color in with that little brush, or again, if you just have a bigger brush, you would just use the little corner edge, um, and then you can come back in with your your bigger bigger tappy brush if you want to, and you can kind of soften soften the inner edge. Okay, our highlights should not be like super hard lines. So a hard line means I wouldn't want it to just be you should be able to see you know the complete outline it should blend blend into the you know into the next color and so if you have questions or you need help with that um, then don't be afraid to ask and you don't have to do it now like if you need to ask me later because you need more time you can definitely message me later uh, privately and then you know we can have a little video chat and I can walk you through stuff or I can just answer questions that way so please please don't feel like you can't ask questions if you if you need to so you can add as many or as few little highlights as you want but see how they really make things pop so if I wanted to break up that little section up here in the corner see I'd take 
my lighter blue or white and I don't have to highlight the whole section. I can just highlight maybe one little spot in the middle. Okay. So I want it to be nice and bright on the edge that's facing the light. So if this is facing the light, I want this part to be nice and bright by tap, 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 tapping. Okay. And then I want the part that's behind it to be darker. So I could add some darker color behind it. And then I want to tap and blend. And if I can't do that with my little brush, I can definitely do it with my big brush. Okay. And then I can add more highlights so you can build and build and build. Believe me, guys, we could sit here for, you know, 12 hours, but I'm sure you guys want to make and eat dinner later. <laughs> I decided I was um, contemplating what time to do these classes at. I've done them at a few different times and I settled on the four o'clock time because um, I have some people that watch in different time zones. And so this way they don't have to stay up super late. And then also, um, if you are getting home from work, you can watch the replay after you get home from work or on a different day. So I figured that this is good for us because I can, you know, hang with and have dinner with my kiddos and we can catch all the people in other time zones. Uh, and then you guys can watch this at your own convenience. So again, this painting is all about building up layers. Just because you did one layer of paint on there doesn't mean that you have to stay just with that layer. Or if you felt like you were adding in too much color and you wanted to break it up a little bit, you can go back in to your black and then you can start adding black back in to a few spots if you wanted to. So I just take my brush and again, wipe your brush off so you don't have a ton. But if I wanted to like break it up and add like a little, you know, a little black section in the middle, because I've made one of my clouds just too giant and I wanted to break it up, I can certainly come back in with that tapping. So remember, you always start in the center of where you want your little section to be at and then you start tapping away from that area because it'll get lighter as you have less paint on your brush and see you can break you can break that up okay so and then you can keep adding in little highlights here so i'm going to so after i added that black section that means that i can then come in and i can highlight this area but also make sure and be aware that if you add black paint in and the paint is still wet that it's going to blend with the black. So make sure that when you're blending or highlighting that the area that you're highlighting over is is dry if you don't want the black to mix together with it. Yay, that's cool, Amber. I'm glad. See, it's all about being flexible with your with your painting. That what I like about this is that you can totally you, you can totally roll with the process and if it's, you know, not exactly how you planned, um you can definitely make little adaptations to make it work for you. So, I'm glad that you were able to figure figure that out and and uh make a an ad adaption that that worked for you. Okay, so I'm going to add some more highlights up here. So if you this is your first time painting with me and you're just popping on to check out what's going on, my name is Danielle Rimbert and I live in Port Orchard, Washington, which is in Kitsap County. And I have been a commission artist in the area for over 20 years. And I, up until this point, uh, was teaching local paint and sip classes in the area and I also am a muralist and paint windows and do t-shirt designs and I've done coloring books and comic books and all kinds of stuff. Um, if it's painted or drawn I've probably made it and so this is my full-time gig and when the shutdown happened um, I had to stop all of my events and so in order to kind of keep everything going, but also keep enthusiasm for myself and for everybody else, I decided to start offering uh, the classes that I normally do publicly and charge for, for free so that everybody can paint along with me. So if you have some supplies sitting around, you can use house paint, you can use makeup, um, 
you know, watercolor, acrylic paint, whatever. Um, I try and make the directions as simple as possible. So any age, any ability can follow along. Um, and if you do need supplies, I have been creating art kits for people to pick up that include brushes and paints and canvas and all that extra stuff. And you can watch the replay or you can follow along um, live, which is kind of fun because then you can interact that way. But um, if you guys want to make a contribution, uh, you can also leave a tip. I have a virtual tip chart, but it's not necessary. I want it to be accessible to anybody that, that uh, wants to be able to create and wants to learn something and, you know, get, get into a positive headspace, a creative headspace, and, um, you know, make something good and, you know, have a little place of connection where we can get together and we can chat and you guys can hang out with me and I can share some stuff that I've done. So I've done a lot of highlights. Dudes, we could add to this forever and ever, I promise. But isn't it starting to come together? It's kind of fun. I can't wait to see what you guys have created. So if you're painting with me today, please, please um, share what you have created with me afterwards on the Facebook page or on the Instagram. Uh, tag Rembrandt Illustration. We're also using the tag spread art, not germs. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you're spreading art, make sure that you tag us and share so we can let people know what's going on and, you know, show them how awesome you are by the things that you create with us. And, uh, yeah. So here's all my highlights. How are you guys coming along? Are we feeling lost? Are we feeling like this is satisfying and cool and happy and we're loving space? Are we loving space? I'm loving space. All right. So I'm going to stop here for a moment and I'm just going to go into the other part. So I know that you guys can highlight this forever and you can add your clouds forever and you can keep blending and I want you to keep doing that, but I'm just going to show the next step. So we created one layer of depth by creating stars on the back and then we did our clouds. I'm going to splatter on my canvas again because I want to add another layer of paint. So I'm going to take my toothbrush again and get that amount of paint that makes it look like I'm going to brush my teeth. I'm going to dip it into my water bowl and I'm going to tap until no drips of water come off because I don't want to do all of that hard work on my canvas and then have it drip down. So I'm taking that toothbrush and I'm tapping and then I'm going to go in for a second splatter, okay? And you can be very gentle and gradually build it up you know, or you can just add it in a few spots if you want. But I'm gonna add a second layer. And then once I have done that, I wanna create some bigger stars. So the little sp splatter is for stuff that's far away. When stuff is bigger to you, you wanna make it look bigger. So I can take my detail brush or my other brush and you can just take the handle, not the bristles, and you can tap that in to some paint just to get it on the end. And then you can create some little constellations or some you know some bigger dots off to the you know in the darker in the darker areas or in front of you know some of the clouds here just to add a little more intensity to your to your painting and so if you know some constellations cool you can just tap them on in there if you don't know any constellations you can certainly look them up um, or you can recreate the anomaly that's happening tonight with Jupiter, Mars, and Venus, and the moon all lining up together. You just have to know how to paint circles and add dots to your, your canvas. But yeah, all I do to create these bigger dots is just use the handle of my paintbrush instead of the bristles, and I just dip it in, and I get a good amount of paint, and then I just tap, tap, and then I can, you know, intensify those areas that I want to bring more attention to. But I don't want to add them add them everywhere. So I just kind of stagger in a few areas and yes, you can put them on top of the top of the clouds cuz who knows, maybe that's just a, you know, a particle floating in space or you know, a comet. If you wanted to create one that looks like it's kind of shooting off, you can make your dot and then kind of scrape it with the edge of your handle of your paintbrush. That works too. Oh, very cool. 11 year old. And then if you did a comment and then you didn't love it and you wanted to cover it up, then just 
go back in with your your colored paint and tap it out and create a cloud. See how easy it is to make adjustments, guys? So I'm gonna add a few more highlights and things on here and then I think I'm almost done. I definitely wanna know if you guys have questions or if you were having issues, um, let me know how things are going for you, if you felt like this was helpful. Uh, please, please go to Rimbert Illustrations page also after you're done painting and check out my schedule because I've got several um, painting and drawing classes coming up this week. We're gonna be doing like a tropical, uh, a tropical painting. We're gonna be doing uh, a realistic eye class where I, I walk you guys through the steps of how to draw and paint a realistic looking eyeball. Um, if you have never painted or drawn or said, I'm not artistic or I can't do that, I don't believe in that. I think that it's all about the will to wanna create and working hard and sometimes it's about the teacher too. So, you know, give me a chance and let me see if I can help you, you know, reach some of those goals or get rid of that uh, mentality that you may have put on yourself that you can't draw or that you can't create because I believe that you can if you put your mind to it and that you have if you have the right encouragement. So if you wanted to after adding all of these little extra highlights and and colors and playing around guys I mean you know if you don't know how to draw a spaceship you can certainly get out a comic book or um, a magazine or something or print out you know an image that you really like and cut it out and then you can glue it or decoupage it on here and then make it um, you know make it a multimedia painting instead of just just paint and you don't have to use acrylic paint for this either you could also do this with watercolor or um, you know tempera paint or whatever and it doesn't have to be on a canvas you could do this really little with little tiny brushes on a on a rock or like I said if you get really into it you can experiment with colors and you can do this on a piece of furniture or on the a table you know like on the side of your on the side of your house <laughs> in your backyard or or something like that um, yeah Anyway, so while we're in lockdown, I have created all kinds of free classes for you guys to enjoy. They're for all ages, all abilities. You don't have to have experience to be able to, to paint along with us. Uh, I want you guys to go to Rimbert Illustrations page, check that out, subscribe to the events, um, follow along, make sure that you guys are able to um, keep up on, on what's happening because I've always got new stuff. And if you are... If you have suggestions for things that you guys want to paint or you want to create, shout them at me because I'm all about suggestions and I want, you know, to do stuff that you guys want to do. So, you know, make sure that you send me those messages, slide into those DMs, let me know what's going on. Because I, you know, one of the things about being an artist, guys, is you never find an end point. You're always learning. You're always growing. Um, I've been painting and drawing for over 20 years, and I'm still learning how to do stuff just like you're learning how to do stuff. And, um, you know, all we can do is is be better and work hard and, you know, expand our expand our mind. So I'm all about personal growth and if I can help you be part of that personal growth then let me help you. So what do we think about space? Do we love it? I'm gonna add more stars. Alright, there's the depth of the depth of space. <laughs> Alright. So I am finished for my part of the painting, but if you guys want to add more in there, you can definitely add more. Yay! I see you guys watching and peeking in on me. Thank you so much. I'm glad that you guys joined me today. Uh, if you have not subscribed to Rimber Illustrations page, that's me. That's what I'm doing. Um, you're supporting me if you subscribe there and if you follow the classes and if you paint along. Uh, 
the classes are free for anybody to join in on. If you do want to make a contribution, though, I have posted a PayPal link where you guys can leave a tip or make a contribution that way. Uh, watch the replay if you caught the live but didn't have supplies. If you need supplies, I have paint kits. I can get them to you and DM me with any questions that you guys might have or any help that you need. I'm going to show the painting one more time so you guys can see that. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed your time tonight woo space <laughs> i hope you guys enjoyed painting with me tonight and you know thanks for all the love i appreciate you um keep checking in have a good night